Hi guys, this is Aishriya from Freshersworld.com. Welcome to our YouTube channel on jobs and careers. Today, the topic that we are going to look on to it is train problems. So, as you can see in any aptitude exam, you can find at least one train problem. Today, I will tell you the four type of problems that you need to know. Anything apart from that is not necessary for any exam. These are the basic problems you should definitely know. So, type 1 is conversion. Type 2 is the time and distance formula. Type 3 is train an object. And type 4 is theory of relativity. In this video, we will be covering the first three types of the train problems. In the next video, we will be covering the theory of relativity. So, let's get started. So, the type 1 problem is conversion. So, conversion is a very simple problem that you may face in any exam. So, the conversion types are kilometers per hour to meters per second or meters per second to kilometers per hour. So, when the question has, you have to convert it from kilometers per hour to meters per second, always multiply by 5 by 18. When the question says, convert it from meter per second to kilometers per hour, multiply by 18 by 5. So, people get lot confused by this 5 by 18 and 18 into 5. So, there is a simple way to remember. So, your answer, if it has to be in meters per second. So, what is meter? Meter is the smallest form when compared to the kilometer. So, always remember, if it's meter, smallest number 5 will be on your numerator. So, if it's meter, remember 5. So, kilometer is the highest form when compared to meter. So, when you have kilometer in your answer, you will be having the highest numerator, which is 18 by 5. Simple to remember, right? So, the type 2 of the train problems is time and distance formula. So, the formula that you have to remember here is speed is equal to distance by time. So, this is the most common question that you can face in any aptitude exam. So, they will either give you the distance and the time, they will ask you to find the speed or they will give you the speed and the time, they will ask you to find the distance or vice versa. So, this is a basic formula that one must know in a train problem. So, let's just solve a simple problem to understand the formula better. So, the question they have given here is, train is 200 meters long and it runs at 50 meters per second. So, when you see the question, always remember you write the given data so that you don't make a mistake. So, length is 200 meters. What is its speed? 50 meters per second. So, what are they asking? So, they are asking the time. So, length is nothing but the distance covered by the train. So, D is equal to 200 meters. So, what is the formula? Speed is equal to distance by time. So, we know the speed, 50. What is the distance? 200 by time. We have to find the time here. So, bring it here. 200 by 50. So, 4 seconds. Now you would have understand the formula much better. So, in this question you can see they have given the distance and ask you to find the time here. In certain question they will give you the distance and the time they will ask you to find the speed. Similar way what they will do is that they will give you two variables out of this formula and ask you to find the third variable. So, with this simple example you would have understood how we can use the formula. So, the type 3 problem that we are going to look in trains is train and an object. In the train and object, we have two types. One is a train crossing a pole or a man or a tree. The another type is bridge, tunnel or a platform. Let's get started with the pole, man or a tree. Let's take the train is crossing a pole or a man or a tree. How do you deal with this kind of stuff? So, we know the formula is speed is equal to distance by time. So, the distance that is covered by the train, let's say this is the train and this is the tree. Let's say the distance covered by the train to cross this tree is the length of the train. So, when we will tell the train has crossed the tree, when it has covered this distance and the back of the train comes here. So, the whole of the length. So, length by train, time taken. So, this is what we will consider in a pole, man or tree. Let's say for a bridge or a tunnel, let's take this is a train and this is a platform or a bridge or a tunnel whichever you may consider 
So length of the train is L1 and length of the bridge is L2. So when you will say the train has completely crossed the bridge, when the back end of the train comes here, that is when it comes to here, you will say that the train has completely crossed the platform. So the distance traveled by the train is the length of the train L1 and the L2. So speed is equal to distance by time. Distance traveled by the train is L1 plus L2 divided by T. Let's solve few problems to understand these two concepts much better. So the first sum is a train is 300 meters long and is running at a speed of 54 kilometers per hour. In what time it will pass a bridge of 100 meters long? So as I said earlier, always write the given data. So given is length of the train is 300 meters. Speed of it is 54 kilometers per hour. What is the length of the bridge? 100 meters. As you can see, train and the bridge length is in meters, but the speed here is in kilometers per hour. So what we have to do? First, we have to convert it to meter per second. Now, we know as per type 1, the conversion, to convert it into meters per second, we multiply it by 5 by 18. So 3, which is 15 meters per second. So, we know the train is crossing the bridge. Speed is equal to distance by time is the formula. So, distance covered by the train is the length of the train plus the length of the bridge. So, length of the train plus length of the bridge by the time taken by it. So, the question asking here is for the time. So, we take that in the numerator. T is equal to length of the train plus length of the bridge is 400 divided by the speed which is 15. So once you solve it, you will get the answer with the time taken for the train to cross the 100 meters bridge. Easy right? So the next problem that we are going to look on to is a train covers 10 kilometers in 10 minutes. If it takes 6 seconds to pass a telegraph post, then what is the length of the train? So that is the question. So as usual, write the given data. So what they have told 10 kilometers in 10 minutes. 10 kilometers in 10 minutes and just first let's write this so they have given the distance covered as well as the time taken so as usual we will find the speed of the train first speed is equal to distance by time so distance they have given in kilometers and this in minutes so let's convert it 10 into 1000 as we are converting it to meter per second divided by as they have given in minute so we have to multiply only by 60 so 10 into 60 which is 100 by 6 which is 50 by 3 so this is the speed of the train let's go to the second part of the question if it takes 6 seconds to pass a telegraphic post then what is the length of the train so we know the time taken is 6 seconds and we know the speed of the train which is 50 by 3 meters per second. Now we should find the length of the train. So let's use a formula. Speed is equal to distance by time which is equal to length by time. To find the length it is nothing but speed into time. So what is the speed? 50 by 3 into time taken is 6 seconds. So 100 meters. So the length of the train is nothing but 100 meters. Let's look on to the third problem. So in the previous two problem, we dealt with a single object and as well as a bridge problem separately. In this question, both are together. It's a bit tricky, but if you understand the concept, it's very easy. So the question is, train moves past a man as well as a bridge of 260 meters long in 8 seconds and 10 seconds. So what is the speed of the train? So first, let's write the given data. So time taken by the train to cross the man is 8 seconds. So speed is equal to distance by time. So distance is nothing but the length of the train here. So length of the train which is equal to speed we don't know that's what we are going to find it out. And the time to cross the man is 8 seconds. So let's take this as the equation number 1. Second is to cross a bridge. 
the same formula. So here, length, distance here is length of the train plus the length of the bridge. So length of the train plus length of the bridge. Time taken to cross is 10 seconds and we don't know the speed. We can simplify it. So we know the length of the bridge which is nothing but 260 meters. So length of the train plus 260 meters is equal to 10 s. So this is the second equation. Now we know the length of the train is nothing but 8 into s. So 260 plus 8 s is equal to 10 s. So if you simplify it, you take 8 s over this side. So it is 2 s is equal to 260. So s is equal to 130 meters per second. So now we have find the speed of the train that has crossed the man as well as the bridge. Today we are going to look on the type 4 of the train problems. In the previous video we dealt about the three types of train problems that you may face in any aptitude exam. Type 4 is the last of its kind. So type 4 is nothing but the theory of relativity. So there are two types of theory of relativity. One is train moving in opposite direction and then train moving in the same direction. So let's say let's just explain for the opposite direction let's say this is train 1 and this is train 2 let's take the length of the train 1 is l1 and length of the train 2 is l2 this is moving at a speed of u1 and this is moving at a speed of v1 so we know the formula is speed is equal to distance by time so what is the time taken for the two trains moving in opposite direction to cross each other completely? So, in this case, what we say is that when this part of the train and this part of the train cross each other, that's when we say that two trains have crossed each other completely. So, always it has to cover length 1 as well as the length 2 to cover the distance. So, L1 plus L2. So what about the speed? So a lot of questions, we know that it will always be plus U1 plus V1. So but a lot of people don't know why it is like that. Let's say we are going in a train. When you see the opposite train, even though it's going in a speed much lesser than you, but you always feel that it is going in a higher speed than you. Let's take you are going in a train which is at a speed of 60 kilometers per hour. Let the opposite train go at 20 kilometers per hour. But still you feel that it's going in a much faster speed. So how do you feel that? That's because the addition of the speed of your train as well as that train is considered. So 60 plus 20, you feel that it is moving at 80 kilometers per hour. And that's why you always feel that it is moving in a much faster speed than in the train that you are sitting. So u1 plus v1 this is the reason we are using u1 plus v1 here for the opposite direction let's go for the same direction same direction parallel all these things you will be using the same formula let's take this is a train and this is another train of length l1 length l2 moving at a speed of u1 and v1 so we know the formula v minus the speed here but why because let's say you're going in a train and you're seeing another train in the same direction of yours. If you're going in 40 kilometers per hour and that train is also going in 40 kilometers per hour, you feel that both our train is not moving. You get confused at that time. That's because 40 minus 40 it becomes zero and you, you have the feel that you're actually not moving with that train. So that is the reason we put a negative here. So speed is equal to distance by time. So the time taken for the parallel trains to cross each other is L1 plus L2 divided by U1 minus V1. Now you would have understand the formula behind the opposite direction of train crossing each other and the same direction of train crossing each other. Let's solve some problems. So the problem number one in theory of relativity is two trains 100 meters long and 200 meters long travels at a speed of 60 km per hour and 30 km per hour respectively in the opposite direction on a parallel track. So what is the time to cross each other? As usual, write the given data. So what is the length of train 1? 100 meters. What is the length of train 2? 200 meters. So what is the speed 
of train 1 is 60 km per hour and speed of train 2 is 30 km per hour. As you can see in the question, they move in the opposite direction. People get confused with the parallel tracks. Parallel tracks means they are going on the parallel tracks but they are coming in the opposite direction. So we take the opposite direction here. So if it is opposite direction, we know that we have to add the speed. So S1 plus S2, which is nothing but 60 plus 30, 90 kilometers per hour. So the catch here is, as you can see, the length is in meters and the speed is in kilometers. As usual, we need to convert it. 90 into 5 by 18. twenty five meters per second so we know the speed now so we know the length so let's find the time so as they are moving in opposite direction we know the formula l1 plus l2 is the distance divided by the speed so length is 100 plus 200 which is nothing but 300 divided by 25 seconds so when you solve 300 by 25 you will get the time taken to cross each other this is the answer for the question let's go to the next question so the next question is two trains of equal length are running on a parallel line in the same direction with a speed of 40 kilometers per hour and 30 kilometers per hour the faster train actually passes a slower train in 30 seconds so find the length of the train so what is the given data in this question they have given the speed of the two trains is 40 kilometers and 30 kilometers and they are moving in the same direction. We know if it's the same direction, we have to subtract it. So speed here is 40 minus 30, which is nothing but 10 kilometers per hour. So it's in kilometers per hour, but here you can find the data in seconds. So we have to convert it into meter per second. So 10 into 5 by 18, which is nothing but 50 by 18 seconds. Let's just have this. So another data they have given is, faster train passes a slower train in 30 seconds so time taken to cover is 30 seconds so in the second part we know that the time taken is 30 seconds the important catch here is the equal length of the train so you know that for the two trains to cross each other in the same direction it has to be l1 plus l2 we know that l1 is equal to l2 here so distance by time which is l1 plus l2 by t we know both are same now so which is equal to 2 l1 by t so we know the speed 50 by 18 2 l1 we have to find it out seconds is 30 So once you simplify it, you will find the length of the train. Sometimes to confuse you, they will ask what is the length of the faster train? What is the length of the slower train? But as we know it's of equal length, whatever be the type of the train, the length is always going to be the same. So this is the fourth type in the train problems. In the previous video, we already covered three types of train problems and this is the fourth one, which is the theory of relativity. If you are thorough with all these four types of problems, there is nothing more that they can ask in any train problems in any aptitude exams. So if you are a person who is looking for a job, kindly register in our freshersworld.com website. We are coming up with a lot of interesting aptitude sessions. So kindly like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you. <music>